Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on pulmonary lecture number seven, oxygen delivery devices, the acute ones. Number two, venturi mask, BVM, and high flow oxygen. For my sticky note, found on Nursing Camp, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and nursingcamp.com. Okay, let's get going. All right, so the first thing we, we talked about last time, we talked about um, oxygen delivery devices. And oxygen is delivered um, on room, where room air equals 21% oxygen. Now what that means is in, when a person is breathing in oxygen, it's 21%. And that goes down to the lungs. And that concept is that that's enough to aerate somebody and to oxygenate them and to provide somebody 96 to 100 percent so if they have good lungs and they have no pulmonary condition that's affecting the lungs like pneumonia COPD um, they should have 96 to 100 percent now if there's a perfusion problem like there's pneumonia or there's some sort of restrictive ear disease like COPD cancer or anything like that it's going to make that person not aerate and not get that 100 percent because 21 percent is the constant that's in the atmosphere now what would happen is is that the lungs will start to increase respirations to meet the demand because it can't aerate um, the lungs so that's where oxygen delivery devices come a person can only increase their respirations for so long we said that greater than 24 respiration is the boat coming please see that lecture on respirations and what happens is, is that when you're greater than 30 that person is working too hard greater than 30 36 they're only going to be that for that long so long and eventually they're going to start to decrease their respirations right? and that's when they start to get tired so in the meantime depending on where the patient is we meet that patient with different oxygen delivery devices over here now Oops. And the first one is a first line of defense is a nasal cannula. Now, nasal cannulas are given because the ease of use. We can give it in an acute condition where, like, it's an MI or pneumonia or bronchitis. Um, they can eat, they can drink, they can talk. The high flow can go up to about six liters, which is about about 40% oxygen delivery. But the problem is, is they might be a mouth breather. And um, so that it's not really accurate, accurate. So that's why we have other flow devices like a simple face mask and a non rebreather. So a simple face mask is given a little bit more for acute reasons. And um, the major difference of a simple face mask is uh, the flanges. And we said that the flanges were these little wafers that are, have holes in them. Now in a simple face mask, these these holes are open, which allows for CO2 to, to get out. Now, on a non-rebreather, though, there's a bag below, a reservoir bag, which captures their CO2. And then on the mask, it has these wafers. And these wafers look like this. And what they do, they sit on this um, on the face mask, and underneath, there's holes in the face mask. And you can take off these flanges and in test questions they talk a lot about that and what what they do is they allow for co2 to come out by removing these face masks the, uh, these flanges and you also change the oxygen delivery both flaps removed is about 80 to 85 percent where one flap removed is about 85 to 90 percent and that's good for a non rebreather because a non rebreather is a hundred percent oxygen in so 100% oxygen, you never put it on a COPD patient because of the CO2, and they start to retain it. Okay, and that's acute. You always want that person on a nasal cannula on a low flow rate, right? Two to three liters, two more likely. All right, we're going to get into the uh, more acute devices. And now when we talk about more acute devices, the big key about to understand this with NCLEX is that you just need to have a basic understanding of what they mean. All right, so the first one I'm going to talk about is a Venturi mask. A Venturi mask is a specific oxygen 
delivery device. Where a nasal cannula, we think it's giving exactly what it is because we know the flow rate, but the person might be a mouth breather, and so we don't really know if the oxygen is going in and then oxygenating the lungs. So when you're looking at those type of deliveries, this venturi mask goes over the nose, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, so they are starting to to uh, breathe in this, and you see these holes right here that allows for CO2 to get out. And what happens is is that each one, like blue, is 24 percent, right? Green is 60 uh, percent, right? And they they kind of move up in different. The reason you don't have to memorize the colors, but in my critical care course, I kind of talk a little bit about acuity based on these colors. And generally, if you see a venting mask in a uh, in a test question, that is an acute question about patient who needs specific oxygen delivery, like a patient who might have bronchitis or or emphysema or um, somebody who might uh, need need to. Uh, we need to be really sure about how much um, oxygen we're going to give them. The next one we're going to talk about is a is a BVM. Now, a BVM I previously talked about in um, with respirations, right? So we we're talking about respirations and high respirations, 30, 36. Well, when a person is breathing on their own, the reason that they're breathing on their own, 30 to 36, is because the lungs are not working and there's a problem in there. So they're trying to increase their respirations to, to aerate and maintain that 96 to 100%. Well, the problem is, is they get tired and they actually start to decrease their respirations. And like 10, so if you have somebody who goes from 30 to 10, that's acute. Okay, the boat is here. The person's getting tired, they're not getting better. Same thing is if you put on a, on a non-rebreather, for the concept, you put in a non-rebreather onto a COPD emphysema patient. Remember that CO2 they want to breathe out, but with a non-rebreather, it goes into the bag. So they breathe that CO2 back in. Well, a patient who says COPD will start to get tired and their respirations will start to decrease. Well, that's a bad sign because if they start to decrease, the problem is, is that um, they are... Uh, retaining all the CO2. I cover that more in COPD emphysema. All right, so BVM, why do we need it? Well, eight is intubate, uh, respirations are eight, and what we do is we bag that patient. We could connect us up to 100%, and we bag that patient. We put it over the nose and mouth, and we are manually respirating that in every six seconds. We are bagging that patient. And um, that's an acute patient. This patient needs to be intubated. You can't sit around and bag them all day. So if you're bagging a patient or you have a BVM in place, that patient is is uh, low respirations and they need manual respirations. The next one is a uh, high flow uh, meter, a high flow delivery oxygen delivery device. It's different types, it's high vapor therm, et cetera. But the, the main key to understand is, is that high flow on the NCLEX is generally not talked about too much. The main reason it's kind of a newer device, newer in the sense of like 10 plus years, but the principle is this. High flow still has a nasal cannula and what we use it for is, is that we use it to get people off of ventilators so they don't go onto a ventilator. It's really good for a bronchitis patient and a patient who has CHF who needs to keep the alveoli open. Now with emphysema, you think about the alveoli, they have no alveoli, so you can't really keep it open if they don't have any. So COPD emphysema is not a good candidate for this. However, a patient with bronchitis, where you need to pop open um, the lungs and the alveoli to aerate, it's all about PEEP. And PEEP is very important because PEEP is like an essential spirometer for the lungs. And what it does is it pops open the alveoli increases oxygenation it's a specific pressured humidified warm air uh, system so as far as the NCLEX is concerned it's really not tested on however i just cover it in this lecture i cover it more in my critical care lecture all right so quick overview these oxygen delivery devices are specific to acute conditions 
And what you have is, is when you're talking about auction delivery, always recognize which one you're talking about because that will guide you to answering the question. Well, my name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp. I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Google, Etsy, and Twitter. Uh, nursingcamp.com and that's it for me. Nurse on.